guys, my name is Kate and I'm the Go Kids director here at Monterey Church. I wanna welcome you to Go Kids. So wherever you might be watching from, maybe you are in your PJs right now, maybe you're getting ready for lunch, or you just had breakfast. Wherever you're watching from, I am so excited that you're here. So let's pray and then get started. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for just every single person who is watching, Lord. I pray that this uh, would just be just glorifying to you that, that we would just learn more about you and just your story and just the love that you have for us, Lord. So I thank you for today and I pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right, let's get started. down isn't the end of the story not if you have resilience resilience is getting back up when something gets you down but you don't need resilience when your balance is as good as mine of course that was going forward the true test is walking the balance beam backwards like so that. <laughs> the true test of mastering the balance beam is walking backwards! <laughs> 
Ah! It shouldn't matter if. Ah! Okay, that is the other one. Come on, come on, no, 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 please. Huh? I guess it's easier to keep your balance if you're watching where you're going. And sometimes, as you'll see in today's story, it helps to look backwards. Woo! Now I'm getting it. Now I got it. I oh I, I got it. I got it. No! I'm just gonna stay down here for a while. I'll come back. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Some days, some weeks, even some years seem hard. You feel like staying in bed and tugging the covers over your head. You feel like you can't face what's out there. The person who wrote the book of Hebrews knew all about that feeling. We don't know for sure who they were, but we do know this person loved God deeply. They understood that the more we discover about what God has done in the past, the more we can trust God to act now. Listen to Hebrews 11. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Faith is not just about blindly hoping for the best when we get out of bed. It's taking a long look at the big picture of God's work through history and trusting that God can work out all the hard parts of our story too. The writer of Hebrews goes on to talk about dozens of men and women who faced difficult times, yet still trusted God. Men and women who got back up even when things seemed impossible. Just think about Abraham. When he was 75 years old, living a comfortable life, God called him. Abram. Abram spun around. Vast darkness stretched around him while stars wheeled overhead. There's no one. It must be. Is it God? The people of Haran worshipped many false gods, thinking they were real. Abram knew this was something different, someone different. Leave your country and your people. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. You will be a blessing to others. The words of the Lord were staggering. Though Abram had no children now, God promised him enough kids and grandkids to fill an entire country. Okay, God. We read in Hebrews, Abraham had faith, so he obeyed God. He did it even though he didn't know where he was going. Abraham listened. Abraham trusted God, and his journey of faith into the unknown led to God's miracle gift of a son. Isaac. In fact, the entire story of God's people starts with Abraham's simple act of faith. Now let's take a look at Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph. Joseph had faith. Joseph was daddy's favorite, with a colorful coat to prove it. He was even cocky enough to share his dreams with his older brothers. There were 11 stars. That, that's you guys bowing down to me. Joseph's brothers were so angry they sold him as a slave. Joseph ended up in faraway Egypt, forced to work hard. But instead of sulking, he made a choice to trust God. He forged ahead and did the work in front of him. Over the years, Joseph's situation changed from good to bad, to good to bad, to good again. In each case, Joseph got back up again and trusted God to work out his story. In the end, Joseph was made second in command to the Egyptian pharaoh. I am putting you in charge of the whole land. In this position, Joseph was able to save his entire family, God's people, when a famine struck. Hundreds of years later, God's people, the Israelites, 
had grown into a great nation, but they were forced to work as slaves. So God called a man named Moses. Moses had faith. Moses, an Israelite, had been raised as the Pharaoh's grandson. But when he grew up, he ran away from Egypt. He lived a quiet life until God called him from a burning bush. Moses, Moses. Here I am. Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. The place you are standing is holy ground. Moses was an old man by this time. He probably didn't want to start a brand new adventure, but God called him to face down the Pharaoh of Egypt. The Lord says, let my people go. Moses chose to trust God. He led the Israelites out of Egypt and through the waters of the Red Sea, even as the Pharaoh chased them. For 40 years, Moses led the Israelites through the desert, facing attacks from the outside and complaints from the people. Oy, we had it better in Egypt. And at long last, Moses himself was able to glimpse the land God had promised Abraham so long before. Abraham, Joseph, and Moses are just a few of the people we read about in Hebrews. Enoch, Noah, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel, and the prophets. These people did amazing things through faith. But faith in God doesn't mean that everything will work out perfectly. It means we can keep going because God knows the end of the story and promises to make everything right, both for these individuals in Hebrews, but also for us. We have an incredible opportunity. When we choose to trust God and get back up, we continue the story of these amazing men and women in Hebrews. And no matter what we face each day, we can know that God has planned the perfect end to our story. On a balance beam, you can keep your balance because you can see where you're going. But real life is different than a balance beam. You don't always know what's going to happen next. Your path might take a sudden turn. You might even. Having resilience means getting back up when something gets you down. It's easy to say, but a lot harder to do. What if you don't feel like getting back up? How do you keep going when giving up feels easier? Well, you could try looking backward. I don't mean literally looking behind you. Huh. I mean, look back in time to people who came before you. How did they handle life when it got hard? How did they keep going? One place you can look is the Bible. The Bible is filled with stories of people who dealt with all kinds of troubles and time and time again, the way they made it through was by trusting in God. You see, God loves you. Plus, God is always with you. And on top of that, God knows what you're going through and what you will go through. When you put your trust in God, it means you believe that God is in control. And knowing that can give you the strength to keep going. So here's the one thing to remember today. Trusting God can help you get back up. People who came before you trusted God to guide their steps. You can trust God too. Doesn't mean you won't, you won't, you're gonna fall. But trusting God and remembering the people who've come before can remind you to get back up. Maybe I put too much wax on the balance beam? Huh. Yeah. Oh, see you next time. Okay, hold on. I got it. I got it. I got it. I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't got it. <laughs>